Hi, I'm Greg from RV Haulers. Today I'd like to show you our latest smart car bed build. This is one of our deluxe beds. It's the one that utilizes a ramp and winch to get the smart car up on top, at the top of the deck. And I'd like to give you a tour around it and show you some of the new things that we've done. But as well, I'd like to kind of sum everything up. We've, got, we've done quite a few videos in the last while during the build and I thought it was time to show you the finished product and show you all of the features together in one video. When we build our RV haulers, the truck component of our RV haulers, we have four priorities that I'm always concerned with. The first priority must be safety. Second, we're concerned with reliability. Third, longevity. And fourth, the performance of these units. When we talk about the beds on the back, I add two additional priorities. I'm concerned with the looks of these beds, and I'm also concerned with the functionality, how they work. On the topic of looks, there's quite a few things that we do that uh, contribute to the overall look of our beds. I think the starting point is we use single sheets of steel and they are sheared and formed. So this is a single sheet of steel that goes all the way across the back of the bed. And you'll notice that they're rolled on every corner. So you don't find welds at every one of those points. Uh, I find that the welds are something that, you know, you got to grind a whole bunch. They don't look as nice. There's always a little bit of lumpy bumpiness to them. But also they're an, uh, an opportunity for the rust to build over time. So those single sheets give us longevity. They give us our reliability, but they also give us some really nice looks. What they also do is they limit our paint preparation time. We don't have to come in here and fix all kinds of blemishes and bumps. There are naturally some of those in every one of our bed builds because we are welding and that metal tends to flex and bend a bit. But it does reduce those imperfections on the side of the bed. Our beds get what I call their spa treatment and they will spend an extra amount of time on our beds making sure that all of the slag and all of that surface of the metal is absolutely clean not only on the outside of the bed and the top but underneath as well. They get in all the nooks and crannies and make sure that this bed is ready to receive a good coat of undercoat and the high quality paint that we use. There too, all of our paints are perfectly matched to the truck. So we're not doing, you know, holding up paint samples and trying to compare we are going from the original factory paint codes and that is the paint material that's being used on our beds. So they last a long time but also in all kinds of different light situations whether it's sun shining directly on them or uh, overcast or a rainy day the color of the bed always matches the original truck color. On the topic of looks you'll see as you go around our beds all of our lights are LEDs, so when these guys light up, I really see you hitting the brakes. And what we've done too is we've gone with a little bit more expensive lighting. I like, personally, especially on these white beds, I like the white LEDs. What happens is the LED components that are in here uh, for the brake and the marker lights are actually red. So as soon as the power comes to these things, they light up. But when you have the bed here uh, just sitting stationary or when you have your lights turned off, I think they match the bed quite nicely. We go with a high quality commercial bed liner material on top of the deck. Uh, we put quite a thickness or quite a layer on top. You'll see I also like to bring the bed liner over the edge so that if you ever use your bed for carrying other items other than a vehicle and you're you know, loading something up, you're putting some sheets of plywood on there, when it runs across this edge, it's going to stand up and not look all scratched up. Let me direct your attention on the topic of looks down the side of our RV haulers and where it transitions from the original truck fairings to the bed. Now, these beds are 101 inches wide to this point and we're, I'm allowed to be 102 inches. So when you look at the bed, you'll see that there's some small little pieces of metal, there's sometimes some lights and some small components that stick out that extra half inch. Half inch on each side takes us to the maximum width of 102 inches. But this bed at 101 inches for the skirting is wider than these fairings. But you'll see that the fairings now line up perfectly. What we've done 
I don't think anybody's ever done this before, is we've been playing for the last couple weeks with some special bracket modifications back in here. What we've done is we've brought this angle out and also we created some modifications to them so that these lower fairings can be brought back. So this crack, this uh, transition from the bed to the fairing, very narrow. Also we've kind of split the difference on these lumps and bumps on the fairing so that we've kind of got things nice and level. What we've also had to do is the hinge point for this fairing is actually up here. It's not right at the front edge. So there's some spacers and some adjustable brackets that we've uh, well invented to make this fairing uh, keep our lines nice and straight onto the back bed so it transitions well. I like a streamlined look on our beds. I don't like too many things sticking out if I can avoid them. So when you look at the top of our beds, you'll see that after the smart car, or if you're bringing motorcycles or whatever it is, a golf cart, a three-wheeler up here, you can make your bed look nice and neat and tidy when you're done. The chocks are removable. Uh, we've gone with rings that are mounted down inside the deck, so they fold flat out of the way. In this case, Mark, the owner of this truck of Drift, has asked that we put a couple of additional rings back here. He never knows what you want to carry. Um, he's a pilot, he tends to carry big things, and he wanted to have a few extra tie-down points. The streamlined look continues on the side of the bed. Uh, I don't like too many, you know, flanges or drip edges uh, sticking out, things that you could maybe catch your pants on and create a tear. I think it looks nice and streamlined. Um, the beds also, you'll see from that angle, they dovetail in and they dovetail down. So creating a bit of a rounded look at the back of the bed um, is there just for the aesthetics, just for looks, but it creates a rounded look. We don't have just a big squared off corner back here. While we're here on this side of the bed, I want to show you a functionality uh, component that I'm pretty proud of. Uh, in our builds, you may have seen our ladder. I think this is a nice balance. There's some other folks that have integrated a ladder or some steps into the bed, but that robs us from our storage that we always value. This ladder system comes out at an angle, so it's much more like a step system. When you're coming off the bed, there's a, a rod that gets installed here, but it's really strong. I can bounce the truck with this guy. Um, I over-engineer everything, I guess. But nice grippies on top of the treads. I can't see too many improvements that I want to make to this, but the reason I create these videos is I want folks to give me ideas. If you've got some modifications you'd like to see or some improvements, please, down below in the comments here on YouTube, let me know what you think. And uh, I, I get a lot of my great ideas from you folks watching. Thank you. Here on the driver's side of the bed, this box is where our ramp gets stored and this box is storage. Um, we have two winch controls, one on each side of the truck. But another functionality change we've made, I introduced this in one of our build uh, videos, were these two airline connections. One is for outgoing and one is for ingoing. So this one allows uh, you to air the tanks on the truck uh, when you need to do an, get in a tow situation. So the tow truck driver can come in here, provide air to your truck, and make sure that uh, the emergency brakes are disengaged. This one is where you can attach your coily cord for airing up tires or your beach balls or anything like that. At the back of the bed, standard now, I'm running air lines to the back uh, in case you're using a blue dot braking system. I believe in future proofing all of my builds, making sure that who knows what the future is going to hold. You may change your trailer, you may only have electric brakes today, but perhaps a few years down the road you may want to change to a blue dot braking system and you have that capability. Uh, we've got the trailer connection for your uh, trailer brakes, electric brakes, marker lights, etc. for charging the batteries on your trailer as well. Uh, we will also bring, in conjunction with the camera system, 
will bring all the lines necessary to monitor cameras on your trailer as well. So if you're looking at the DRVs or the Continental Coach or New Horizons or Spacecraft, many of those little bit higher end coaches are now integrating sometimes a left and right camera on the trailer and a rear camera and we will bring all those lines to the back and put a fitting back here so you can connect them as well. A point of pride for the guys and myself is how we outfit this box. This is the winch, a 4,000 pound Warren, so a good, good quality winch. Good proven track record. One of the things we're very careful about is upgrading this cable. It's not a steel cable, it's actually a braided uh, fabric line. So you don't have to wear gloves when you handle this. You're not going to get those frays that poke and rip into your hands. I mentioned just a moment ago about how we put a winch on both sides of the bed. I'll bring the camera around and show you some of our wiring here next. Here too we pride ourselves on being neat and tidy. We've got the proper breaker, a resettable fuse if you will, so that the winch can draw a fair amount of power and not trip, but as well it won't burn itself out if it gets into a very heavy load situation that it can't handle. But if you look at all of our wiring, wiring neat and tidy, um, proper gauge, and wherever it's ran through the back of the box we've got nice rubber grommets across it and it's carefully tied from the one side of the bed to the other as well even the color coding of the wires making sure we have that correct when it goes to the battery source you know right away that you're dealing with a positive or a negative now getting this winch line up and over the bed and making sure that it doesn't rub too much on that opposite side has been a discussion point amongst a lot of people over time so what we've chosen to do is create a winch arm it stays outside the bed quite a bit quite a distance now we've been making some improvements every time I watch one of my customers use my beds load a smart car drive a truck I'm taking careful notes I'm always looking for points of improvement and creating a winch arm that was all one piece was quite unwieldy and also I don't know where to store it. So we created this two-piece system. So when you are getting your winch line prepared, it's easy to get this winch line over to the other side. It keeps everything up nice and high. Um, stays away as the smart car comes back and rests against the chocks that we're going to put up here in a moment. Uh, it makes sure that it doesn't perhaps uh, bump against the car. Now another issue is because this arm is quite tall, the bumper of the smart car is actually down here. So by having this out a little bit further, it's made sure that as the smart car is being winched to this point, the winch isn't actually pulling the smart car up. It still has a bit of an angle. Now another point I'm pretty proud of is a pretty simple little modification I made in conjunction with Jack Mayer and nod hats off to Jack is putting these ovals in our chocks. What happens is when a smart car is coming up onto this bed it is never exactly perpendicular. It's always a little bit turned and what will happen is the wheels of the smart car won't exactly nestle up to each of these chocks identically. One will be, one wheel will always be a little bit forward. By putting these notches, I'm able to move these chocks fore and aft a little bit independently and always get the wheel nestled in here and the wheel basket uh, tied and snug down for safety. Every one of my beds includes everything you need to load your smart car. The chocks, we call these the wheel baskets. These I've had custom made. 
They're made by a professional strap company. They're over-engineered, certainly over-engineered for the weight of the smart cars that we're carrying. But they're the proper size to fit either the front or the rear wheels of the smart car. If you've seen some of my previous videos, you know I love to deliver my RV haulers. No matter where you are in Canada or the United States, I'd love to bring this to your doorstep. And when I do, every one of my smart car beds includes a toolbox. I always want to arrive and make sure that we've got a couple tools that we need to put these chocks on the bed. So these are half inch bolts, three quarter inch ratchet is necessary, but boys and their toys, we love our tools as well. I discovered this just recently to show it off today. This is a three quarter inch cordless ratchet. So for the manly man moments when you're there in the campground, I think we could upgrade to one of these. These aren't too expensive. You can get them on Amazon. They're made by Milwaukee. I just think they're cool and I had to show everybody today. While I'm standing here, I'm gonna show you all about our fuel tank positions. Now, before I can tell you about fuel tanks, I'm going to tell you about drum boxes. I believe in making those drum boxes the widest and the tallest that I can. This is a model 730, and the tallest drum box that I can build is seven feet high, and that takes us right to the top of the roof. But what also affects our storage, of course, is the width of this drum box. And what we've done is I've maximized the width of these to six feet. The reason I can't go any further than that is because we have to be able to fill our fuel tanks. Our fuel tank is down in here. And what's different about commercial fuel tank fillers, or the nozzles, is they have two wrists on them. The ones at the regular gas station, they have a wrist that kind of goes like this, so when you're trying to get down in here, it's a little bit tougher. The ones at the card locks, they're the larger commercial locations, have two wrists on them and we are able to put a hose straight down into the fuel cap that's right down in here but I can't make these drum boxes any wider because it starts to encroach on that space that I need for getting the fuel hose down into that spot All of our RV haulers come with a proper set of ramps. I believe in over-engineering. I think I've said that before. Each of these ramps is capable of supporting 2,000 pounds. So we have a total capacity between these two ramps of 4,000 pounds. And of course, our smart cars are half that. I also make sure I don't want you to have to buy anything when you get your RV hauler. So my RV hauler beds come with the bumper that goes on the back of the smart car as well as the bolts that go into the smart car uh, frame.
This is an older smart car. This is the 450 series. So this is one of the first ones that they brought out. And if you look at the smart car, it's right in line with the edge of this bed. And if you look at the front, it's actually back about an inch. These are shorter smart cars. The more modern ones, the 451 series, and even the ones we have coming out next year, are a little bit longer. And what we like to do is, again, with my adjustable chocks, we can, we like to get the little few extra inches of the smart car sticking out on the passenger side. That way, the oncoming traffic on the other side of the road, uh, a sheriff or a highway individual, won't necessarily see the overhang that way. Close it. Thanks for watching our video on our deluxe smart car builds. If you have any questions about our RV hauler trucks or our smart car beds or our drum boxes, give us a call. And you know our website is www.rvhaulers.ca. Thanks for watching.